will advance. Right! Start! Open auto. Right. And as we mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, the parade is being furnished by members of the Belize Defense Force Service and Support Battalion, the National Police Department, the National Coast Guard. The parade commander is Major Kenrick Martinez. Parade Sergeant Major is Warrant Officer Class 1, Therese Robinson. The right marker is Sergeant M. Bulum. The left guide is Corporal Greenwich. The color party is comprised of Anzain, 2nd Lieutenant Ken Young. Color Party Sergeant Major is Warrant Officer Class 2 Raymond Clark, escorts to the collar are Staff Sergeant Vladimir Carrillo and Staff Sergeant Ricardo Ayala. The street lining that we are seeing there is made up of members of the Belize Defense Force, the National Police Department, the National Coast Guard, the Scouts and Girl Guides, and the parade is being facilitated by Force Sergeant Warrant Officer Class 1, Wilfredo Mahano. In a short while, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have the first arrival, and the first arrival will be that of Ambassador Stuart Leslie, who as Cabinet Secretary acts as Deputy Governor General. Approval has been given by the palace to appoint Ambassador Stuart Leslie as Acting Governor General. A ceremony was held at Belize House yesterday, April 29, appointing Ambassador Leslie as Acting Governor General. And so he will act until the Governor General designate is sworn in as Governor General. So in a few, we'll be seeing the arrival of His Excellency, the Deputy Governor General, Cabinet Secretary Stuart Leslie. The band of the Belize Defense Force, Captain K. Campbell, Director of Music, Trumpet Voluntary.
band of the Belize Defense Force, conducted by Captain K. Campbell, Director of Music and the Trumpet Volunteer. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now seeing the arrival of His Excellency Stuart Leslie. Ambassador Stuart Leslie, as Cabinet Secretary, acts as Deputy Governor General, and approval has been given by the Palace to appoint Ambassador Stuart Leslie as Acting Governor General. Ladies and gentlemen, Wait. Ambassador Stuart Leslie. Shut. And that it can't ease it. Shortly, ladies and gentlemen, we shall be seeing the arrival of Honorable Madam Chief Justice, Acting Chief Justice Michelle Arana, who will be representing the judiciary out here. So, in the meantime, the band, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, we are announcing the arrival of the Honorable Madam Chief Justice Michelle Arana, who is here today to represent the judiciary. And let me tell you, in a few weeks she will be playing a very important role in that she will be swearing in the Governor General designate. Ladies and gentlemen, the Acting Chief Justice of Belize, Michelle Arana. And that it can easy. There are two more arrivals, ladies and gentlemen, before we start our official program, one of our three. The leader of the opposition will be arriving, and then the Prime Minister will be arriving, and then His Excellency the Governor General, Sir Colville Young. So that will be happening in just a few.
and gentlemen, there you have the band of the Belize Defense Force, conducted by Captain K. Campbell, director of music, and a wonderful rendition there of a selection put together by Sir Colville. Let me acknowledge, and I think it's happening right now, the arrival of the leader of the opposition, which will be followed by the arrival of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister will be taking a salute, and the salute is a gesture of respect, of polite recognition or acknowledgement, especially one made to a person when arriving or departing. A greeting, salutation, sign or token or ceremony expressing goodwill, compliment or respect for saluting a superior. The salute, the present arms, and the salute with the sword were methods by which the person paid a compliment could show that the person to whom that compliment was paid that no offense was meant. They are all gestures symbolic of loyalty and trust. And so we'll be witnessing several salutes this evening. There's another one that we will be witnessing as well, which will be the royal salute. And the royal salute will be given to his Excellency, the Governor General. It's a military mark of respect, of compliment. Those are members of the royal family, governors and ministers to whom the sovereign delegates authority, formed bodies of troops on the sovereign's business. The musical composition you will see when or hear when the Governor General takes a royal salute is made up of the first five bars of God Save the Queen, followed by the chorus of the Belize National Anthem. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we are waiting the arrival of the leader of the opposition, Honorable Patrick Faber. And I'll ask Captain Campbell to give us a bit of more music while we await his arrival. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now announcing the arrival of the Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Patrick Faber. Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Patrick Faber. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are announcing the arrival of the Prime Minister of Belize, 
Honorable John Briseño and hey, Mrs. Briseño. And as I said earlier, the Prime Minister will take a general salute from the troops and the band here assembled. Ladies and gentlemen, the arrival of the Prime Minister Belize Honorable John Briseño and Mrs. Briseño. Shortly, ladies and gentlemen, We'll be witnessing the arrival of the Governor General of Belize, Sir Colville Young. The Governor General, as you know, heads the executive branch of government and is also the guardian of the Constitution. The Governor General is also Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces. As such, the Guard of Honor today comprises of senior ranking officers of the Belize Defense Force, the Coast Guard, and the Police Department. The Guard of Honor also includes representation from the Scouts and Girl Guides Associations. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, arriving now is His Excellency, the Governor General of Belize, Sir Colville Young. And as I mentioned earlier, the Governor General is taking a royal salute. The royal salute made up of the first five bars of God Save the Queen, followed by the chorus of the Belize National Anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the Governor General of Belize, Sir Colville Young. Thank you so much. You may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. His Excellency Sir Colville Young, Governor General of Belize, Honorable John Briseño, Prime Minister of Belize, and Mrs. Briseño. Honorable Patrick Faber, Leader of the Opposition. Honorable Madam Chief, Acting Chief Justice Michelle Arana. Ambassador Stuart Leslie, Cabinet Secretary. His Worship Bernard Wagner, Mayor of Belize City. Right Reverend Philip Wright, Bishop of the Anglican Diocese. Honorable Valerie Woods, Speaker of the House of Representatives. Honorable Carolyn Trent Sandiford, President of the Senate. Her Excellency Marta Boza, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps. Her Excellency Claire Evans, High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to Belize. His Excellency David Sheehan, Ambassador of Taiwan to Belize. Ambassador Amalia Mai, Chief Executive Officer in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs family of Sir Colville Young and special invited guests, heads of the armed forces, the Belize Defense Force, General Ortega, the Commissioner of Police, Chester Williams, and the representative of the head of the National Coast Guard, Lieutenant Alma. Good evening and welcome. Let me start off by saying that I count it an honor and indeed a great privilege to serve as your master of ceremonies on this historic occasion in the life of our nation. In our now almost 40 years of existence as a free, sovereign, independent nation, we have seen the appointment of only two governor generals. The late Dr. Dame Minita Gordon, became Belize's first Governor General on Independence Day, 21 September 1981. Sir Colville Young became our nation's second Governor General on the 17th of November 1993. He has the distinction of serving as Governor General during the full terms of the governments of Prime Minister Right Honorable Sir Manuel Esquivel, Prime Minister Right Honorable Said Musa, Prime Minister Right Honorable Dean Barrow, and is now admitting office today just short of six months into the new administration of Prime Minister John Briseño. Four of Belize's five Prime Ministers. He holds the record of the longest serving Governor General in the Commonwealth. This is his last appearance as Governor General of Belize. And on behalf of a grateful nation, we thank him for his outstanding services to Belize and wish him well as he retires after 28 years of service and in rotary terms, 28 years of service above self. Our constitution in its preamble recognizes the supremacy of God. It says the people of Belize affirm that the nation of Belize shall be founded upon principles which acknowledge the supremacy of God, faith in human rights and fundamental freedoms, the position of family in a society of free men and free institutions, the dignity of the human person, and the equal and inalienable rights with which all members of the human family are endowed by their creator. 
So we thank God for his continued blessings over our nation. I now call on the Lord Bishop of Belize, the Most Reverend Philip Wright, to deliver the invocation on this historic occasion. Bishop Wright. Kindly stand. John O'Donohue once wrote, This is where your life has arrived after all the years of effort and toil. Look back with graciousness and thanks on all your great and quiet achievements. You stand on the shore of a new invitation to open your life to what is left undone. Let your heart enjoy a different rhythm when drawn to the wonder of other horizons. Have the courage for a new approach to time. Allow it to slow until you find freedom to draw alongside the mystery you hold and befriend your own beauty of soul. Now is the time to enjoy your heart's desire, to live the dreams you've waited for, to awaken the depths beyond your work and enter into your infinite source. Let us pray. Eternal God, thank you for the seasons of life, for the joy of childhood, the excitement of youth, and the stability of maturity. Thank you for the blessings that come with age, for all the happy memories to enjoy, for the wisdom that comes through experience, and for the freedom that is given in retirement. Grant that the life of Sir Colville Young in retirement may continue to be an instrument for serving the common good, with time for leisure, for new growth, and for service even as we now thank you for his long-term contributions in the fields of education, music, the arts, and so much more. Grant him as he leaves the accomplishments and trials of work a sense of gratitude for those who have shared this journey with him in his role as Governor General of Belize, as a teacher, a principal, a mentor, and friend, as a musician in the church, as a champion of things cultural, and as a statesman on the world stage. Give him thankfulness for all who have supported his life's journey, especially Lady Young and the rest of his family, as well as for all those who have shared in his spiritual journey, that he may continually use insights from his past to help others to know and love the God he serves and loves. Grant him wisdom and understanding in the ordering of retirement life that he may be blessed with a positive and hopeful perspective so that future years may be valued and productive in the service to you and to others. Give forgiveness to us and to Sir Colville for all things done and left undone in our common life and grant to the people of this grateful nation the vision to keep alive the inspiration and legacy of Sir Colville, to guide and bless his successor, to fulfill the mission given to us all, to become who you want us to be, that all people might know God and love each other. We make these petitions through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Lord Bishop. You may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Let me recognize also the officers and members of the Guard of Honor, made up of the Scouts of Belize, the Girl Guides of Belize, the Belize Police Department, the Belize Coast Guard, the Belize Scout Association also invited guests, my fellow Belizeans at home and abroad who are listening to this broadcast, welcome. Welcome. It is indeed history. At this point, we'll 
play for you a compilation of photo and video footage of the works of Sir Colville Young in his capacity as Governor General of Belize. We can turn to the television screens here. The greatest single cause of human misery on our planet is surely poverty. And, admittedly, the surest remedy for poverty is economic growth and a fair sharing among the people of a country of the fruits of economic growth. The profound thoughts of a man who, for almost three decades, served as the head of state of Belize, our Governor General and Chief Representative of the British Crown in this Commonwealth nation. Sir Colville Norbert Young was more than just the most senior diplomat for Belize. He was a product of the Belizean soil. Sir Colville began his service to this country as an educator. He was the founding president of the National University, then the University College of Belize, where he taught up until his appointment in 1993. I don't think he hesitated because he has a tremendous love for the country. Um, I'd have to say he's from the kind of make that the George Prices and Philip Goldsons and so came from, right? I don't know what it was around that time, but they, you know, country before everything else, right? Sir Colville was appointed as Belize's second Governor General post-independence. In those 28 years, he worked with four of the five Prime Ministers of this country. Many people may not know that as an educator, he taught both former Prime Ministers Right Honourable Said Musa and Right Honourable Dean Barrow when they were students at St. Michael's College. And he undeniably left an impression as an architect of the young minds of these future leaders. I was in his choir. So I was a very nice choir when I was a student at, when I was a student at St. Michael's College. Um, but I remember him as an English teacher. When I became uh, Prime Minister in 1998, I had to make a decision whether or not to retain Sir Alvin, but I had no hesitation in keeping him as a Governor General because I considered him, and I still do, as a very a person of high integrity, honesty. And, uh, and Sir Colville Young is most known for his love of music. This passion started at birth. He was born in Belize City in November 1932 into a musically prominent family. His contributions to the creative, performing and literary arts transcend many generations and have been etched in Belize's history. He uttered Creole Proverbs of Belize, from One Caribbean Corner, and the all-time favorites like Pataki Full, Snapshots of Belize, and the play Riding Haas from the Penguin Jukme series. He is instrumental in the documentation of Belize's tangible and intangible Creole culture heritage. Dr. Young has contributed to the literary arts from multiple perspectives. Among these, chiefly, has to be his contribution as an author as a writer of plays, of writers very concise and vivid. And, you know, the way he tells a story, so not only can he bring these characters to life on the page, but he could also bring them to the stage. I think the country lost a great musical composer and a writer when he became Governor General. I think the, 20, the 28 years that he spent as Governor General, he did not produce any music, not write any more books. And I'm one of his biggest fans when it comes to his books and his music and his plays. Before he was Governor General, Sir Colville composed the folk opera Tiger Dead, the cantata Ode to Independence, the Mr. Caribenia, and many other songs which are still performed today. While he may not have been writing or composing music as Governor General, Sir Colville never left the creative arts industry. 
he embraced his office and managed to garner support to give life to a Music in Schools program. And of course, Steel Pan and the Band Fest. I don't think anybody that grew up in our family can help but be a musician. <laughs> My father being the way he was. Sir Colville and Lady Norma Young, both career teachers, got married in 1956 and share four children, Colville Jr., Maureen, Lynn, and Carlton. I grew up with two really good parents, right? And uh, if you're talking discipline, then that's my mother, not my father. All the discipline in the house was meted out by my mother. <laughs> but we had two very good parents and I think we took it for granted. I think it's after we grew up then we realized that we really had special parents. Naturally, Sir Colville had to spend much of his time away from home for official appearances nationally as well as attending diplomatic events overseas. For half of the time, he was accompanied by his aide-de-camp, Major Eric Neal, the officer commanding Echo Company 1st Infantry Battalion of the Belize Defense Force. He's just that a man, humble, compassionate individual who understands the importance of knowing people and where needs be, providing just like those words of assurances for others. It is not, and I would say, during my experience, he never came off of somebody who was elitist, pompous, to say. He never allowed the, the role to, quote unquote, fill his head. Neil, the chief scout with the Scouts Association of Belize, shared a personal bond with the GG, the patron of scouts in Belize. His Excellency is one of my childhood heroes and not many young boys, particularly young boys who came from the ghetto, from the slums of Belize City, would be able to serve their childhood heroes. It's a legacy of what he has done. He has helped us with scout bands. He has helped us just recently with our um, steel band instruments. He has helped us with our guitars. He has, so music is in him. Even as his time as Governor General comes to an end, Sir Colville is being revered for his service to the Belizean people. A down to earth person, real grassroots, that he would never pass anyone without greeting that person or without shaking the person's hand. I intensified my duty to him. I intensified my loyalty to him to the extent where I proclaimed that I would be willing to sacrifice my life in, to protect his and his family. Um, even now, you know, when we talked to him about retirement, he was very reluctant because he said he can serve and, and he felt he should serve. So, for him, uh, it was not so much the honor, but the opportunity to, to serve and also to make a difference. His accomplishments in music, literature, academia, culture, and social outreach can be seen and felt across this country. An inspiration to all. That's the man behind the title, Sir Colville Young. Ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful presentation of the work of Sir Colville Young as Governor General of Belize.
Like mentioned before, His Excellency Sir Colville Young, Belize's second Governor General, has been our Governor General for the past 28 years. And may I say, he has been a good, loved, and well-respected Governor General. We all know he has been a dedicator for most of his life, having served as high school teacher and principal, the president of the University College of Belize. As an educator, as we have seen in the video, Sir Colville has positively touched the lives of many Belizeans and continue to do so. He touches many lives too of young Belizeans through his music in the schools program. He himself, as we heard, is an accomplished musician, composer, music director and arranger. He has produced many of the more popular music works in Belize. He is responsible for introducing steel pan music to Belize. He is also a poet a writer of short stories, a linguist, and a preserver of the Belizean folklore, folk songs, and local proverbs. I, I count it an honor to know Sir Colville the way I do. I can remember way back when he would visit old Radio Belize to record some of his work. I remember when he became the first president of the newly established University College of Belize. I was chief broadcasting officer at the time. Later on, as governor general, he invited me to serve on his music in the school's committee, a position I still hold. I also count it an honor to have served as master of ceremonies at about mm, well over 90%, I would say, of his state receptions held yearly in celebration of Belize's independence. Throughout the years he has represented our country as Governor General, he has kept his true personality, and those of us who have been privileged to enjoy his humor and wit a testimony to who he really is. He is a true Belizean man with a passion for the cultural development of our country. Even though he walks with heads of state from around the world, he maintains his humility, but makes sure he represents Her Majesty the Queen in a fair, effective, dignified and professional manner. He has positively touched my life and the lives of many. And here I will refer to only one event which is now a legacy, a musical legacy to Belize. And there are several. Besides the steel band, I refer to the band fest. The Belize band fest comes directly from his inspiration. And the band fest will be renamed in his honor. And upon resuming after COVID-19, will be known as the Sir Colville N. Young Belize band fest. The band fest was one of the original goals of Sir Colville when he became governor general. In my mind, he felt that while music in the school's program was providing instruments, there was no forum for young people to display their talents. So soon after becoming Governor General, he got a group of us together to organize a band fest. I was part of that group, and although it didn't happen then, we made sure it happened years later. So marching band music in Belize had almost died, but Sir Colville wanted to revive marching band music on a national level. In his meetings with us, he would express his desire to see such a competition. So I directed my efforts to make that dream, his dream, a reality. Belize Bond Fest was born and is still carried out under the distinguished patronage of His Excellency the Governor General of Belize, Sir Colville Young, thereby exposing the talents of thousands of young Belizeans who have benefited over the years from his Music in the Schools initiative. Sir Colville's vision of Bond Fest is now firmly set as perhaps the major standalone event in the country. The new Sir Colville N. Young Home of Scouting in Belize will be opened soon, and there will be a small reception there after this function. His inspiration has led to the first Home of Scouting in Belize after 40 years plus of dreaming. Indeed, the seeds planted by Sir Colville Young in scouting, education, culture and music will continue to grow and live on. So will his music and cultural legacy to our country. The Prime Minister of Belize, the Honorable Johnny Bresenia and Mrs. Bresenia, His Excellency the Ambassador Mr. Stuart Leslie, who will be acting Governor General 
until the new Governor General is sworn in. The acting Chief Justice of Belize, Madam Justice Michelle Arana, the leader of the opposition, the Honorable Patrick Faber, the Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Belize, Bishop Philip Wright, Excellences of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, friends of all description in Belize and around the world, Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Words of William Shakespeare. When In 1993, I was approached by the then Prime Minister, Sir Manuel Esquivel, and offered the post of Governor General. I hesitated. I consulted with family and trusted friends, and finally, I gave a positive response. Not once have I regretted that decision to serve Belize in that high post of Governor General. But then, you, the people, have made my job far easier than I expected. Men and women from every corner of Belize, of every political persuasion, of every religion and ethnicity, the young and the old, the high and the low, you have all been my reliable friends and you have been my allies every step of the way and for this I thank you. But I must thank a lot of people. First of all, I want to single out the many who have cared for my health so that I was able to reach where I am today looking forward to the twilight of my years. I thank my good friend Dr. Hugh Sanchez who advised me what to eat and what not to eat and what to drink lots of water and what not to drink alcohol I'm afraid I did not obey him 100% in not touching alcohol I had an uncle who told me he never touched alcohol with his hands. Well, 
I am afraid I touched it with my lips. But Dr. Sanchez will tell you that I have been a very moderate partaker of alcohol. The late Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen's husband, was once asked, why is it that his favorite drink was vodka and orange? And his reply was, I don't think the orange does much for the vodka, but the vodka does wonders for the orange. Well, I like a little of that bad thing, liquor, but only a little. Then I want to thank Dr. Julia Hall and her husband, Dr. Douglas Hall, my dentist, Dr. Wayne Usher, Dr. Francis Smith, whose wise advice has helped me to preserve my old bones. My ophthalmologist and former student, Dr. Victor Valdez. These and a host of others have looked after my health, and to them I say thanks. Then I register a strong thank you to my wife and children as well as my brother, only one, and sisters, all, but all still strongly supporting me, as have my in-laws and adopted family, like Mr. Philip Mackay, also now living in the United States. In saying thanks, above all, I remember the young people of Belize. If I have initiated programs for their benefit, they have in turn enthusiastically joined in those programs. Whether as scouts, guides, musicians taking part, as Dr. Villanueva said in the annual Banfest, the young people of Belize have been my staff of comfort to help me and encourage me every step of the way. Sometimes they have surprised me. I'll give you one example. I had a, an engagement in Corosol Tong. And after that engagement was over, as we were traveling by road back to Belize City, I was amazed to find the road lined by children. They had heard over the radio that I was in Corosol, and they figured that I could not get from Corosol to Belize City without passing them. So they lined the road and saluted as I passed. They surprised me 
and I thank them, but that is only one of many ways in which the young people of Belize have shown me affection and support. Then I must thank the diplomatic and consular corps for the strong support they have given me in my endeavors. The Governor General, the Ambassador of India, at my request, donated a great many items of cricket gear to be donated to the villages of the Belize district who love cricket with a passion. Then I want to thank the Hochandani brothers and family for helping me with my annual Christmas party for the children of Belize. Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. That crown will now be passed to my su successor, a great choice by Prime Minister Johnny Brisenia, a lady of learning, of charm, and of patriotism. I wish her well, as I'm sure all of you do. And I'm sure all Belize will welcome her and support her as you welcomed me and supported me during my tenure of office as Governor General of Belize. So, I thank you for all you have done for me and for enabling me to do so much for Belize. My years of retirement will perhaps not be as quiet as I wanted it to be because already I have been getting note from people here and there and everywhere that they will not allow me to go silent into the good night. So thanks once more for all you have done for me and all you have enabled me to do for our lovely, our great little country of Belize. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Excellency Sir Colville Young, for that farewell speech. It's his last presentation as Governor General of Belize, and I'd like to elicit another round of applause. And if you're at home or anywhere listening right now, let's give Sir Colville a rousing round of applause in appreciation for a job well done. And now we move to our cultural presentation. And the Pantemptas. 
steel band uh, here. And I'd like to thank Mr. Ian Courtney for furnishing the following information. It goes like this. 29 years ago, under the leadership of the then Dr. Young, the Pantemta Steel Orchestra was formed out of the student steel band of the University College of Belize. After being appointed Belize's second governor general, the musical directorship of Pantemptas was taken up by his son, Lin, who held that responsibility until 2009, when young Herschel Armstrong took over. However, once a Pantemptor, always a Pantemptor, and Sir Colville's DNA remains embedded in the orchestra. Being the master musician that he is, the Pantemptas Orchestra has always considered it an honor to be invited by the Governor General to play at his annual official independence celebrations or at any other ceremonial event. Forever grateful for his patronage, the members did not think twice about accepting the invitation to play for his farewell ceremony despite COVID restrictions on its ability to practice. The two pieces performed today were arranged by His Excellency. The first item, entitled Rosie, was arranged around our September celebrations. And the second item you'll hear, Welcome to Belize, was arranged and performed for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth on her visit to Belize. Ladies and gentlemen, for a cultural presentation of the evening, the Pantemptors Steel Orchestra.
Great music by the Pantemptors Steel Orchestra, ladies and gentlemen. Wonderful steel pan music. There you heard two selections, Rosie, which was arranged for our September celebrations, and the second item, the Welcome to Belize, arranged and performed for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth on her visit to Belize. Both arrangements and compositions by His Excellency Sir Colville Young. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the departures. Sir Colville Young will mount the dice for the last time. He will be given a farewell salute by the Belize Defense Force as he is in effect retired. He will no longer receive the Royal Salute. The Royal Salute will next be played at the installation of the new Governor General after she has taken the oath of office. But Sir Colville will be receiving a farewell salute from the troops and scouts, etc., out here. And he will be mounting that, like I said, for the last time, give him that farewell salute, and the Belize National Anthem will be played. Ladies and gentlemen, the departure hey! of His Excellency the Governor General, Sir Colville hey! Young. He will not be receiving his farewell salute and the playing of the Belize National Anthem. Salute to His Excellency Sir Colville Young. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause. And now I'll invite the acting. General Ambassador Stuart Leslie, who will also be giving permission to the parade to march hey! off to receive hey! the general Shut! salute as acting Governor General of Belize. Shut! Ambassador Stuart Leslie. Shut!
General Salou. Reason! May I have your permission to march the parade off oh, your excellency? Ladies and gentlemen, the departure of His Excellency Stuart Leslie, Acting Governor General of Police. The parade will now be marching off. Parade furnished by members of the Belize Defense Force Service and Support Battalion, National Police Department, and National Coast Guard. Parade Commander Major Kendrick Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll announce the departure of the Prime Minister of Belize, Honorable John Briseño, and Mrs. Briseño. Ladies and gentlemen, the departure of Prime Minister John Briseño and Mrs. Briseño.
And now the departure of the leader of the opposition, Honorable Patrick Faber. The departure of the Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Patrick Faber. And now we announce the departure of the Honorable Madam Justice Michelle Arana, Acting Chief Justice of Belize. And thank you so much, my Lord Bishop. Departure of the Acting Chief Justice, Honorable Madam Justice Michelle Arana. And of course, you can see Lord Bishop, the Bishop of Belize, making his way out as well. And that brings us to the end of this official ceremony. We want to thank you so much for being here and for tuning in. And we want to wish you all the very best. It's a historic ceremony in the life of our nation. Long live Belize. Viva Belize. Viva Belize.